Welcome back, ladies and gents, and any and everybody in between. So last time we finished up drawing our wall section, and this should be saved in your Trimble Connect Projects SketchUp DDP folder. So we finished our initial wall section, and this gave you guys some insight and some knowledge about how a wall is constructed, how far apart the studs should be, and also, and equally as important, how to function and draw basic things in SketchUp. So we're going from this basic wall section that we have here. We made this nicey, nice, beautiful component. We're going from this basic wall section to making a door frame and a window frame. That way, when we get to your house and your floor plan, you can just plug and play all these different pieces in where they need to be, where your floor plan indicates. So, without further ado, let's get into making a door for you. We're going to start by making a copy of this wall section. So, I, what I want you to do is press M for move, and then control. And we're going to slide this wall section down the red axis. Remember to use your arrow keys to lock into axes. Arrow keys for axes. Always a good idea. Click and place it down a little ways. And then we're going to start by getting into editing this group. So some of you might have this as a component. And if this is a component, if I went to edit this piece right here, any other component that's the same, it's going to make the same edit too. Which is great if we're doing a lot of plug and play with the same things. But if we're making something unique, as in a doorway or a window, we're going to need to make this component unique. So if you have this as a component right now, our copy, I want you to right click on it and then go to make unique. All right. When I double click now, if I enter that group for my wall section, anything that I click on is not going to be corresponding to the initial. Why? Because we made this unique. All right. So onto the doorway now. The first thing I'd like to tell you is our doorways that we're going to be making are going to have an opening of 36 inches. So what I want you to do is about the third stud in from the left, we're going to start by drawing a line. So press L for line. Just find the midpoint. We're going to hit the right arrow key. Okay, so our line should be locked into red. And I'm just dragging this over, and the measurement I'm going to enter is 36. Enter. All right. If we were making a real doorway, this measurement would be a little bit larger. We'll talk about real doorways and stuff like that at the end. But for those of you people out there that understand framing or door jams or doorways, uh, I know that it's not the true rough opening, but we're going to go with 36 inches for the time being. So we drew our line at 36 inches here. That's how big our doorway opening is going to be. Now I want to move these studs out of the way. So I'm going to click on this middle stud. If I press M for move, get in the habit of selecting the corners. So I press M, and I clicked on that inside corner. And I'm going to slide and snap this so that way it's on the outside of that stud for the doorway. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to move this one over. And as I move this one over, I press the right arrow key again. I'm going to come up to this line and use this as a reference point. And I'm going to click on this line. So right now what I have is an opening that's 36 inches wide. On one side I have a double stud. On the other side I only have a single. So I'm going to make a copy so we both sides had two studs. So press M, control to make a copy. We're going to click on this inside corner, slide this to the outside corner, and click to place. So right now what we have is a double stud on the right, a double stud on the left. What we need to do is start getting this so that way your wall can support the load here. The reason why these studs are placed 16 inches, of, or 16 inches apart in reality is so that way if there was another floor or a roof on top of this, that this entire load that would be going across the top here would be supported by these vertical members here. 
So the problem that we have with the doorway is when we open it up this wide, that this could potentially sag. So we have to add in more supports for that purpose. How high up are those supports? How, how, how tall is your door opening? These are all great questions if you're thinking about them inside your head. And I plan to answer them for you right now. So we're going to go ahead and press L for line again. And we're going to click anywhere down here in the middle. We're going to click for our line. I'm going to press the up arrow key to lock that in. And I'm going to type in 84. Okay, That's usually a general rough opening for a doorway. So we're going to stick with 84 right here. Now I know that I'm going to bring both of these down. So that way I can start to add support. And it's actually called a header into the top area right here. All right. So the first thing I want to do is select this stud over here. And I'm going to shrink this thing down. The easiest way to do this is to scale it down. So if I press S, you guys should remember this from the dice. There's a bunch of little dots that show up or toggles. It's with some things you can grab to change positioning or height or size. These toggles will show up. So I pressed S for scale. And the toggles showed up. If I want to see all of them, you press K. That's going to show you all the hidden lines. And that's usually really helpful here because the one that I want is this top middle toggle. So once you press S for scale and K to see all the hidden lines, I want you to click and release the top middle toggle. I'm going to start to bring this down. And I'm going to use this over here, that line that we just drew as a reference point, and then you can click there. Perfect. Spacebar to exit the command. If the hidden lines are too much for you when you're just moving around, you can turn them off by pressing K. Pressing K turns them on and also off. So now we're going to do the same thing to this side that we did to the other side. So select the inside stud. We're going to press S for scale. K, so we can see through to the middle, middle top. Click and release, and I'm going to bring it down and snap it so that way it's the exact same height as our opening. Ta-da! Very, very good. We can turn K off right now. All right. And we won't need any of these lines anymore. So you can use your erase, your, your group select, whatever is most comfortable for you. So now we have these two studs shrunk down, and I know some of you are thinking, but Mr. Mancari, why in the heck would we do that if we need more support? Don't worry. That will all make sense in a brief moment. What I want you folks to do now is zoom in on the face of, a, of the board next to the short board. So we're zooming in so we can see this face where my mouse is. Not my mouth, my mouse. Press R for rectangle. For the way that I have my wall section drawn, this is going to be a red rectangle. If your face was on the green side, um, you're going to use a green uh, rectangle. But for this demo and for what you're seeing, the most important thing is to know that you're on the face of the board drawing this. I'm going to click and release to start my rectangle. And I'm going to start bringing this up. The measurements that we want are 1.5, 3.5. Remember, that's the measurements of the stud. Okay, 1.5, 3.5. And now, after I make that rectangle, I'm going to click and release my push-pull, come all the way to the other side, and I'm going to use this inside edge of this board as my reference point to click. Ta-da! There is our header. This thing's called a header. This is going to distribute the weight. But Mr. Man Carry, there's nothing connecting it. Don't worry, we shall get there. First things first, though, we got to triple click and make this a group. And then we're going to move a copy of this group to the other side. So do you see how I'm panning and rotating so I can look at this from the back? It's going to make it much, much, much easier for you if you get positioned correctly first. So I would recommend getting to this position. So it's very easy to move a copy. M for move. C for or control for copy. I'm going to click this bottom corner 
And right now I'm going down the green axis for my drawing. So you folks should also try to use the arrow keys to lock in. And we want to make this flat, a no, more technical term for flat is flush, flush with the back here. Okay. There should be a small gap in between your two headers. Why? Because this measurement for your 2x4 is really 1.5. This measurement for this other 2x4 is 1.5. 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3. And if you remember, the width of the face of the board is 3.5. So that means 3, 3.5 minus 3 leaves a 1 half gap there. All right, so ta-da, there's our header. Now we're almost at the point where we're just about done. What we're going to need to do is move a copy of this inside shorter stud. This is actually called a jack stud. We're going to move this in and up to this corner. So it's important you click this bottom corner and then you click this top corner. So I've placed this here, but it's still way too tall to be useful. So we're going to do the same thing that we did to shrink these inside studs. Okay, we're going to shrink this one by using our scale command. So I press S for scale. I'm going to grab this middle inside one using my zoom and my pan to change my position. Sometimes if it places itself, it's all right. You just got to pick up kind of where you left off. So I'm going to place this there. That's the perfect height now. And all I'm going to do is make a copy of this. M, control. I'm sliding this down the red axis, so it's the right arrow key. 16, enter. That's the distance that we're going. 16 inches, enter. And I know I'm going to need at least two or three. I did an extra one. And all I'm going to do is move this last one into this corner. So there it is. To answer your question, some of you might have been holding in your brain. We have our supports here, also known as cripples. Um, it doesn't... It, it has a different meaning in construction systems. But these are our cripples up top here. This is our header. This thing's called the jack stud. That would be our king stud. One last bit of cleanup to do. And then we have our doorway. Actually, two last bits. So, first and foremost, what we have to do is... Actually, you know what? Let's just do this because it's going to be easier for our final design. We're going to delete that bottom. And we're going to delete all these extra studs. And what we should be left with is just this door frame right here. All right? So we have our door frame here. Eventually, when we get to assembling your house, we'll go over how to bring this door frame in and delete out the unneeded parts. Some of you that are intelligent can figure out that... Uh, can figure out that this is going to be pretty much the same as the window and also that it's easy to uh, edit these parts out so please 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 get your doorway done today and once that's finished go ahead to the window video and once we have all our basic components done we're actually going to get to start building your house all right have fun enjoy if you have questions ask somebody that knows and until i meet you again later